In this video, we prove the singular value decomposition, or simply SVD, for real matrices. Let's consider an M by N matrix that we will call A, and I will put a tilde here to simply stress the fact that A is a matrix. And we also assume that the rank of this matrix is equal to R. If we take a transpose A, the product becomes an N by N matrix with the rank still being equal to R, and I will say something more about it later. This matrix has the property of being positive semi-definite, which means that if we take a generic vector X, we have the following uh, inequality. So if I take X transpose and then I take the matrix A transpose A and I, and I apply this matrix to the vector X, this is greater than or equal to zero. This is easy to show because this uh, product here can also be written like this. This is AX transpose AX, but this is none other than the mode of AX squared. So this property is important because we can use it to prove that the eigenvalues of uh, A transpose A are all greater than or equal to zero. I will show you. Since A transpose A is clearly symmetric, by using the diagonalization theorem, we can write a transpose A equal to V capital lambda V transpose, where V here is an orthonormal matrix whose columns are the eigenvectors of uh, A transpose A, and uh, where um, R, which is uh, less than or equal to N, Remember that this is the rank of A, but this is also the rank of A transpose A. And this equality here is actually not so difficult to explain because the rank is just the maximum number of linearly independent columns. And since the linear system AX equal to zero and A transpose A X equal to zero all have the same solutions, we can say that the rank is indeed the same. So I want to prove the fact that if this is true, then this must be true and vice versa. So if this is true, then this must also be true. And how can we do that? Well, if we assume that this is true, then you can easily understand that this must be true as well, right? It's very easy because uh, AX here would be the zero vector. So A transpose AX can be written as A transpose zero vector, and therefore this is the zero vector. So here we start from the fact that AX is equal to the zero vector. And we get that this must also be equal to the zero vector. And what happens if we start from here? So let's start from here. So we assume that A transpose A X is equal to the zero vector. But now we can multiply, so we can take X transpose, like this, so we can put X transpose here on the left, so we have X transpose A transpose A X, and here we have X, X transpose, and here we have the zero vector. But of course, X, tra X transpose zero vector is equal to zero, so it's as if we take the dot product between a vector X and a vector, which is the zero vector. So we get 
0. And we can also rewrite this like this. So this is equal to AX transpose AX, but this is equal to the mode of AX squared. And now we see that AX squared is equal to zero, which is true only if this vector is equal to the zero vector. So AX must be zero. So this is some kind of intuition behind the fact that uh, the rank of A is equal to the rank of A transpose A. And after this, what I want to say is the following. So let's get back to A transpose A written like this, V lambda V transpose. This is simply the diagonalization theorem, which we can apply because here we have a symmetric matrix. A transpose A is clearly symmetric because if you, if you take the transpose of this, you still get A transpose A. Lambda is diagonal, so this uh, capital lambda matrix is diagonal, and we can also rewrite A transpose A like this if you want. So this is equal to a summation over I from 1 to N of lambda I V uh, I V I transpose like this, where we are summing over the columns. And the columns of V here are the eigenvectors VI here. And let's rewrite the following uh, inequality. So we take X transpose A transpose A X greater than or equal to zero. And by using this equality here, we can rewrite this as summation over i from 1 to n lambda i x transpose v i v i transpose x. And by the way, let me also tell you that this product here, v i v i transpose, is a matrix if you think about it because v i is a column vector. Whereas this is a row vector, so a column vector by a, a row vector gives you a matrix. And in this case, it's an n by n matrix, remember, because this is an n by one vector. Here you have a one by n vector, so you get A transpose A, which is an n by n matrix, sorry, n by n. And if you recall, we wrote it here. So let me rewrite this in here. So this is equal to the summation over i from 1 to n, lambda i. And here I can write this as vi transpose x transpose. And then I have vi transpose x. And therefore, you can write it as summation over i from 1 to n lambda i, and here you have the mode of the vector vi transpose x squared, like this. And remember that this must be greater than or equal to zero, because we have already shown that this is true. But when does this inequality hold? Well, of course, this term is always greater than or equal to zero. And remember that these uh, parameters here, these eigenvalues are all independent. So it means that each of these terms should be greater than or equal to zero. So we can set lambda i equal to some other scalar sigma i squared to remember the fact that this is non-negative. So we get sigma i squared. This is a definition if you want. For the i eigenvector eigenvalue pair, we can write a transpose a applied to vi 
and this is equal to, of course, the eigenvalue, which is sigma i squared, vi, like this. At this point, we define a new vector, which is ui, and we define it like this. Matrix A applied to vi, and then we divide by a scalar, which is sigma i. By construction, we can prove that ui is a, a unit eigenvector of A, A transpose. Now, pay attention to the fact that this is A, A transpose, whereas here we have A transpose A. So the order is important, actually, because this one here will be, will be an M by M matrix. So pay attention to this detail. This is actually important. A is a m by n. So if I take A transpose, I get an n by m matrix. And when you take this product, you get an n by n matrix. Whereas if you take A, A transpose, you will get an m by m matrix. It's easy to see. But try not to get confused between this and this. So we want to show that ui is indeed an eigenvector for this product of matrices and we will also show that this uh, vector has unit norm. So it means that ui transpose ui is equal to 1 and we will prove it. It's uh, actually very easy to prove. But first let's prove that this vector here is a uh, an eigenvector for this matrix. And how do we do that? Well, let's take that matrix, which is A, A transpose, and let's apply it to UI. Now we can simply rewrite this definition here for uh, UI. So I will write it here, A, V, I, divided by sigma I. But now here you can see that you have A transpose A applied to VI. And we know that VI is an eigenvector for A transpose A. So here we can write A, and then, here, and then we have the eigenvalue, which is sigma I squared, VI divided by sigma I. So here we can rewrite this as A sigma I. Actually, let me rewrite it like this sigma i squared a vi divided by sigma i and this is just ui so you can see here that you have sigma i squared ui and therefore from this equality here it's easy to see that ui is indeed an eigenvector for a a transpose and the eigenvalue is a sigma i squared. Now let's prove this equality here. So the fact that ui has unit norm, ui transpose ui is equal to a vi divided by sigma i transpose and then we have a vi divided by sigma i and this is equal to vi transpose a transpose a vi divided by sigma i squared but now here we have a transpose a applied to vi and we know that vi is an eigenvector for a transpose a and the eigenvalue is sigma i squared so we can simply write vi transpose sigma i squared vi divided by sigma i squared. So this is just a scalar. We can even put it uh, in front of this expression. We can factor it out and we can also simplify sigma i squared in the numerator with the sigma i squared in the denominator. So here we have vi transpose vi. But now remember that vi composes the matrix that we called v tilde and v tilde was a, a orthonormal matrix. So V transpose V is equal to the identity, which means that this dot product here is equal to 1. Now let U 
you tilde here, so it's another matrix, and in particular, this would be an M by N matrix. We define U, and the ith column of U will be UI, the vector that we call UI. By looking at the definition of UI, you can see that this is a column vector with a M components because uh, UI is proportional to AVI and AVI is uh, A, which is an M by N matrix times VI, which is an N by one vector. So here, when we take this product, we have an M by one vector. With all these things in mind, we can rewrite the relation for UI. Remember, we have UI equal to AVI, and then we have sigma I to the minus one. So it's in, the, it's in the denominator, this is a scalar, we can also rewrite the expression like this. But we can also rewrite this in matrix form like this. So we can write U equal to A, and then here we replace VI with the matrix V, and instead of sigma to the minus one, we rewrite capital sigma to the minus one where sigma to the minus one is a diagonal matrix. So this one is a diagonal matrix where the ith value on the diagonal is the reciprocal of sigma i, the scalar sigma i. So on the diagonal, we have one over sigma i. So the reciprocal of that, or sigma i to the minus one. Since it's a diagonal matrix, it's very easy to get the inverse because you simply have to take the inverse of the elements on the diagonal. And therefore, from here, what do we get? We can rewrite this expression like this, u, and then we have capital sigma equal to a, v. And finally, we have a equal to u, sigma, V inverse, but remember that V inverse is equal to V transpose because V is an orthonormal matrix. So here we have V transpose, like this. If the matrices can be complex instead of real, the transpose operator should be replaced by the complex conjugate transpose. So in particular, this expression would be generalized like this, A equal to U, sigma v dagger where uh, this uh, operator here this dagger operator simply means that we have to take the transpose and then the complex conjugate or vice versa first you can take the complex conjugate and then the transpose so if you want to indicate the complex conjugate with the bar you can put the bar so every element of the matrix should be complex conjugated and then you take the transpose but usually one writes this dagger symbol. Remember that A here is a M by N, whereas U here is M by M, and this V here is a N by N. So this sigma matrix should be an M by N matrix. If you prefer, we can also set W equal to V dagger. So if you want, you can rewrite everything in this form. A equal to U sigma W. So in this case, the dagger does not appear, but it is just notation. And W is still an N by N matrix, of course. Now, just uh, one comment about one of these steps. Here, when I go from uh, this point here to this point, it's as if I'm taking the inverse of this. So, sigma would appear on the right of U, if you want. 
it is not really proper to define sigma inverse because sigma is not a square matrix. So I could have started actually from this step here where uh, I rewrite this expression as sigma i ui equal to a vi. And when I write it in matrix form, I recast it like this. So here I'm putting all these vectors vi in columns to form this matrix V. And then here I'm rewriting sigma i ui in this fashion. So the ui's so are uh, rearranged like this. I have u1, u2, dot dot dot, um, and then here I have uh, this diagonal matrix sigma1, sigma2, dot dot dot, sigma m here, and then here I have other zeros actually because in general this matrix is a uh, m by n. So in this case, I'm assuming that n is larger than m. Now remember that actually the rank of uh, the matrix A was equal to R, which is smaller than the minimum between n and m. So in this case here, I'm assuming that m is less than n, but it's not really important. In general, we can say that uh, the first R columns of V, of the matrix V, are an orthonormal basis for the row space of A, while the first R columns of U are an orthonormal basis for the column space of A. In the low rank scenario, some uh, sigma i's here might be um, equal to zero. Provided that the sigma i are sorted, we can complete u by adding additional column vectors that span r m and then add rows of zero vectors to the matrix that we call the sigma. But these are some details that I don't want to get into. Let me stop here because I think it is a good place to stop. I just wanted to give you the intuition behind this fundamental theorem, which is the SVD or singular value decomposition.